everybody, and welcome to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the head football coach at Lakeland College. Jim, as usual on the show, we like to get, get right, right to, to it. it. <laughs> so here we go. Boy, what a game. I tell you, people are just exhausted even watching the yeah. game. I guess i got to mention the score right off the bat. 26-23, right. uh, to 23, an over, a four-overtime loss to UW Oshkosh in Oshkosh. Uh, what do you have to say about the game? <laughs> uh, it, it was a great game. You know, you hate to say that when you lose. Right. Um, but the atmosphere was unreal. I, I truly thought, I told all the fans, all our parents, you know, everybody that was at the game afterwards, we had as many, if not more, fans than they did. And that stadium is big and so on. That place was electric. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hear myself calling plays in the overtime periods. Our sideline was going crazy. Our fans were going crazy. They had these yellow megaphone things they were using up there, and you could see the Lakeland crowd. And it was a great atmosphere, you know, and, and like I said, it's tough to say, oh, uh, we could game, but we lost. I mean, mm -hmm. do we have chances to win? Yes. Did they have chances to win? Yes. You know, it was right there for us or for them. But I think for college football, for Lakeland, I think the experience was, was unreal. And I could, I was exhausted. I mean, <laughs> and that game could have went on forever. You know, that game just kept going and going and going. And the, the mood swings were unreal. It was like a roller coaster. I mean, one team was up, the other team was up. We do something wrong, they do something wrong. And I really think what happened was by the third quarter, I think early on they thought they were going to take it to us because they were moving us around a little bit. And they're big sign of guns now on both sides of the ball. I really think they thought that they were going to take us to us. But it was like that Rocky movie. I was telling you, the car's like Rocky IV. You know, you got to cut it. And like when Drago finally gets cut by Rocky, he's good. And I feel like in the third quarter, we finally cut him. And, and all of a sudden, they stood there and like, because they haven't gotten a touchdown in 10 quarters, and we all of a sudden scored in the third quarter. And they're like, wow, it's a ball game. Mm -hmm. Holy mackerel, these guys are. And that's when I knew our kids had a chance, because it was like total, it was like a slugfest after that. It was, man, I think they got nervous, because they didn't expect us to be around. Mm -hmm. And, and we started believing. You know, Coach Craig Ardero Square said, we, he really thought we started believing by a third quarter that, hey, it is just a football game. Hey, it is just another team. Now, that's a team who beat Wisconsin Stout last year, who was unreal at 8 and 1 or 9 and 1 or 8 and 2, whatever they were last year. And Oshkosh beat them. And, and that puts us right in that category where, you know, we can go. So, yeah, of course, we wish we would have won, but wow. Exhaustion is a good word for that sucker. Well, Ashkash came in as the big bad boys in the block, mm -hmm. kind of sticking to your Drago thing. They came in yeah. like, I will break you. Yeah, exactly. You guys are just like, did. go for it. Yeah. Rocky used to say, you it know, did. It's... And that game, though, had opportunities, honestly. They had, the way we played in the first half, they had opportunities to knock us out. Mm -hmm. They did. They could have put that, that game could have been 21 nothing, first half. But since they didn't, and we made some great plays to keep us around, then all of a sudden, you're right in the second half, our kids finally said, I went in the locker room and and uh, talk pretty sternly to them in a sense of let's start believing we can actually be here and let's start doing the things we're supposed to do and so on. And once they did that, it was on. And that was even Steven football now for, for the next 12, however many quarters we played. Well, let's even take a step backwards. First yeah. off, enrollment at yeah. Lakeland College, 835. Right. New all-time high. I've got to mention right. that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Then, but yeah. again, Oshkosh has nearly 11,000. Right. And then, of course, you're playing in a, uh, a stadium that's, that holds about 10,000 people, yeah, too. at least 10. It looks yeah. huge. And yeah. uh, how'd your kids go into that? Were they just like, oh, you know, let's go for it? Or, or were they just, you know, were they a little nervous, you think, uh, intimidated at first? Or? Us coaches, we were just like, let's just go for it. Because yeah. we've been, uh, you know, and... When I coached at Southern Illinois, we played at the old Sombrero and the new Sombrero because that was our mm -hmm. South Florida's home field was uh, Tampa Stadium, so I'm not. But I think our kids try to not, try to downplay it, of course, but yeah. I think sometimes once they get out there, and I think it takes them maybe a little bit, even though they played there last year, and so I still think, you know, it's a, it's a great setup. Mm -hmm. You know, the field takes a little bit of a beating because they have a high school games and Pee Wee stuff, but that, the setting's great, and I think, I really think our kids, for as much as I talked and so on, about believing, and I think it took them a half to realize why we're, we can do this, mm -hmm. and, and we're here. Like every overtime period, I just kept saying, we're still here. I told you guys we're going to be here. We're still here. So I did. I, I think our kids were a little, I don't know I'm nervous. I don't know what word to use. I think um, odd. We, we did some things on both sides of the ball where we thought we had to because they were so big mm -hmm. on both sides of the ball. Maybe we look back, we didn't need to. Because the second half, our defense played flat up, straight, base defense and, and beat them up pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, as you mentioned, Oshkosh jumped out to a 7-0 yeah. lead in the first quarter, but then from there, it was pretty much a stalemate right up to halftime. Was. It was a great, we, they scored, we came back on a three-yard, four-yard four line, first and goal on the four. 
get nothing out of it. Drop a touchdown pass, miss a field goal. Um, they, Eric Boyd makes a great play, knocks the ball out of the quarterback's hands in the second quarter as he's going in for a touchdown. Okay. So we get lucky to not give up another score there. And then they missed a field goal or two, too. So, I mean, there was more potential for scoring in that first half, mostly on their side, but our, deep, our kids survive. I, I, the, I keep telling them the day we actually stop making so many mistakes <laughs> and having to stop coming back from adversity is a, is a day we're going to be really, really special. I'm really opportunity to be really, really good, mm -hmm. you know, because we're good right now, I think. And, and those kids are believing it, but gosh, if we cut down some of our errors, that's when you start seeing some scores where you're like, whoa, you know, they, 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 and you give some people some, some beatings in terms of on the scoreboard. It kind of gets back to that old saying in the past, you've, hear, you've heard people say so many teams end up beating themselves as right. opposed to other teams actually beating them. Exactly, and, and we, t and I feel bad, me being the head coach, and the coach, you know, I tell the other guy, like, <laughs> I'm the worst head coach in America because with the mistakes we make, we probably shouldn't make, but then our kids somehow try to, try to make, they make mistakes to almost give the game away, but then they, they don't let it happen. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, if I want to leave something on the program for this year, so I, I hope that's something that we instilled in those kids. Mm -hmm. We as coaches made them realize you're never out of it, mm -hmm. regardless of how bad you might do in terms of certain plays or situations. Don't give in. Mm -hmm. And our kids just don't give in. Mm -hmm. I think that's what keeps us in. But like I told you before, the, before we came on, well, I think we can play with the Stephen points of the world and stuff. And I think we can play with teams that aren't that good either right now. We got to learn to, Yep. to uh, when we play a team that maybe we're better than in terms of physicalness or size, that we got to take it to them. But at least we know we can play with teams that are bigger. Well, that's an important step, too, because hopefully if you get to the point where you want to get your program to right. get in the postseason, right. well, when you get to the postseason, you're not going to be you know, a flabbergasted or anything like that. Exactly. Shocked. I mean, you're, you're, you're prepared right. for it. I mean, they had a trans they're, they're a DM with a Northern Iowa transfer, mm -hmm. huge. He was a great-looking kid, and he played great. And their one tight end was over to Wisconsin. Their tight ends were huge. Mm -hmm. Their tight ends looked about 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 2'4", and they were huge, and they were, and they were really good. Mm -hmm. So our kids battled through that, you know? And, and like I tell you, we ended up playing with a backup center. who's a great kid, Andy Argo. He's 204 pounds. <laughs> we're, we throw a 204 pounder. Most high schools in this area are going to have centers bigger than, than our, our guy who played, but he just, he plays hard, he plays hard. So we ended up playing, and, and we survived in there. And we're, we're actually playing more. People didn't realize that we're playing more and more freshmen as this thing rolls on. Mm -hmm. There were probably three or four freshmen that played the whole game or got a significant amount of playing time, which is a great experience for them, too. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys uh, went into the halftime 7 nothing. You said you gave a stern talk to your team. Yeah, uh, I, I, we call it positive reinforcement, positive <laughs> encouragement. <laughs> That's a good way to look at uh, it. <laughs> yeah, I let it loose. Yeah. I did go out because they weren't, I thought they weren't. We were getting handled, and I hate when a, a team that I'm associated with is getting handled. Mm -hmm. And I said, we can't get handled anymore. In much sterner language, <laughs> I said that on both sides of the box, defensively we were surviving, but we were hanging. Yeah. Offensively, we just weren't, we were getting beat up mm -hmm. in terms of just we couldn't block them. Mm -hmm. Well, again, it must, have, it must have worked because right away you guys came out in the third quarter. And as you right. said at that point, it's kind of a combination. You got your crowd going absolutely crazy yes. in the score, and you got the Oshkosh fans, you know, just that you could eat you know, as quiet as it could be. Possibly it it was, it was. And just what you said, it was like, it felt like we were at a home game. Mm -hmm. our, like I said, I, I can't say this enough, John, our crowd was unreal. Mm -hmm. I never, it, we, we, out, we were louder than they were. It, it was amazing. <laughs> I told all the, I saw a lot of young ladies from our campus that were there and, and all the parents, I said, you guys are unbelievable. Thank you so much. I mean, I was like in tears going, I never heard of a, going to someone else's place and having a crowd, you know. Mm -hmm. But you're right, once we scored, all of a sudden, I think our fans actually thought, <laughs> We got a chance, you know. And their fans are like, "Man, this is this is a game," you know, because they beat Concordia last week, twenty-one to three. Right. And they they basically manhandled them. I mean, that game was over pretty quickly. And we sat there and said, "Hey," and also everyone started believing. <laughs> and that's where it all starts. So it starts with your team to believe first, and all of a sudden it kind of spreads. And once it, once people get on, you know, jump on the bandwagon, so you're right. It's, just, it's an amazing feeling. Exactly right. So, but the third quarter, you guys scored on a 24-yard pass from Brent Lukey to Sean Barron, and, and right. Big Bird is Bird is uh, Sean's. Bird had a day is, now. Yeah, boy, we can't even say enough about him. What no, a game! Huh? He's a, and you know him from baseball. He's right. an unbelievable athlete. Like you said before, he probably could have played pro baseball if he would have stayed healthy. I'm just. Right. Just his athleticism. Mm -hmm. He's skinny. He's tall. He's six three. Whatever he is, six four. Yeah. I don't even know what he weighs. It's probably hilarious. <laughs> he's he's not exceptionally strong weight room wise, 
but he's an athlete. He's a gamer. He's a competitor. Mm -hmm. I saw him bouncing around on Thursday and Friday's practice. His knee's been hurting him. And I said, you got a lot of I call him Grandpa, because he looks so old. He looks like the oldest guy on our team. So I go, Gramps, you're, you're moving around pretty well, because I feel good. And after 15 catches for 160 yards and three <laughs> touchdowns, I guess he did feel good. He did. He sparked us. He made a great catch. We'll see on tape after break. Okay. I'll break up, make a couple people miss, and he did a great job. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, uh, at that point, it's 7-7. But then you got to give Oshkosh some credit. They came right back at right that point and, and just put it right in. They, and, they, and that's why I think we had a chance to fold again, because mm -hmm. you come back. 7-7. Seven, seven. They come back 14-7. You're like, that was, that was a quick answer. <laughs> that was a quick answer. And then we, we didn't get in, though. We, mm -hmm. we ended up driving back sometime in the fourth quarter, missing a field goal, mm -hmm. which is disappointing because our second field goal in the game. So we could have made it 14-10. But then we had some nip and tuck type stuff. We got the ball back in fourth quarter. I don't know how much time was left, four-something or three-something we scored. Actually, 256. 256. Just under three minutes to go. And we hit a post to Bird, Sean Barron again mm -hmm. for a touchdown. It was a good read by the quarterback. It's a backside read. Same play that uh, we dropped last week for a touchdown. We ended up making it come through. And, and then chaos was going on in that stadium at that point. <laughs> when it was 14-14, watch out. Well, I got to ask you, did you even consider being on the road? Did you ever consider going for two at that no, point? You know, that, no, that, honestly, that didn't cross my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you, I wish I could say, yeah, I was thinking about it. But, <laughs> or pull out a fake or something. You know, I really sure. didn't. I didn't. I was, I, I feel okay with our PA. I, I get better feeling with our kicking game. Mm -hmm. But I really, at that moment, I didn't think it. But I did tell Coach Creek, hey, being a ne not negative, being realistic, Chris, if we miss it, we gotta go onside. Mm -hmm. Cause we don't have any time out, we gotta get the ball back. So we, we were ready, prepared in case we did shank that, but geez, uh, Gerald Starner, we call him Jeeps. Jeeps made the extra point. 14-14, kick it deep and let's go. Mm -hmm. And of course, at that point, actually, you guys even had another possession. I think it went we back did. and forth a couple times. They, we stroked them really quickly and made them punt. And we got the ball back and uh, they had two timeouts left. We had none. We were on our own like 18 yard line. We wanted to run the clock out, but we weren't running the ball very well right then. They had us beat up physically up front, so we tried to get some things, and we didn't get it. We ended up having to punt back to them with like 50 some or minutes something left, minute 30 left, and our defense held them. And, mm -hmm. and then the fun, then the fun started. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't even know where to go here because obviously yeah. four overtimes just kind of kept going back and forth. But uh, um, Oshkosh scored first on a 37-yard field. Yeah, right? overtime. Real quick, I know we're we're getting close to break here. Right. Overtime was. No one scored in the first overtime. Okay. We had the worst overtime drive maybe in the history of college football. <laughs> we had a hold, a sack. So we're, we're fourth and 30 from our 45-yard line. So everybody knows in college you start from the 25-yard line right. and you try and score. And we almost get we almost get a vertical anyways. Mm -hmm. When our defense has to go out there, they, st they stroke them. They, we call a timeout to ice their kicker. The kid whiffs. He misses. He shanks a 32-yarder. Back to back to the square <laughs> one. They got the ball. They got the ball first in the second overtime. They kicked a field goal. We came back. We drop a touchdown pass. We could have won, mm -hmm. but then we kick a field goal. Jeeps kicks it. Bang! Third overtime is when the fun occurred. We get the ball first. We score. Don't go for two. You have to go for two. They come back and score. They miss for two. Now it's the fourth <laughs> overtime. They get the ball first because it just keeps Wait a switching. Hold on a second. This yeah. is a perfect time to go to break. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're the the right we get you back to the fourth <laughs> overtime. <laughs> so, yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more on the Lake and Locker Room. What does being involved really mean? Is it making grilled cheese sandwiches for a sleepover? Staying for the curtain call at the talent show? Or learning the names of their favorite bands? Believe it or not, right now, there are parents just like you out there talking about things like this. From school to home, from friends to futures. And we'd like you to be a part of it. National PTA. Every child, one voice. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the football coach at Lakeland College. Jim, we were just recapping the game, and, right. and uh, we're into the overtimes now. We're into number and, four, and, number and, three, I think. <laughs> in case somebody's just joining us right now, 26 to 23 was the final versus UW Oshkosh. Unfortunately, we fell in four right. overtimes, but you're we just about ready to recap the fourth overtime yeah, and the outcome th of the game. Third overtime, we both scored, and we both missed two. Mm -hmm. Start the fourth overtime, they get the ball first, um, which you want to have happen. They end up kicking a field goal. So now we got, we got a chance. You know, again, we get um, seven yards on first down. We make two bad, two not very good plays. Now we're 
fourth and four from the 19, I think, somewhere right around there. We got a chance to kick a 36 yard field goal to tie it and send it into the fifth overtime. <laughs> and I call a timeout, I like Coach Creek, and I go, Coach, you know, it's fourth and four. I go, our kicking game hasn't been exceptional. You know, 36 yard, we can make it, but it just hasn't been great. You know, what do you think? And he looks at me and goes, What do you always say? I said, I've always thought from the moment I took this job, I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go after it. And, and I said, and he goes, have you got something? I go, yeah, I feel pretty good about what I, we've been throwing the ball pretty well. I go, yeah, I got to play. I go, let's roll. You know, let's go. <laughs> you know, I know. And we did. And, and you'll see the last play on the tape, uh, not showing it because of, of what happened, but just we missed a read. We, we read it. We just threw a bad ball, and we had a kid open. Mm -hmm for 10 yards, but it was so funny because he saw the ball. We threw the ball into the ground somewhat, and I'm going, oh, because I knew he was open. Until I watched the tape, I didn't realize how open, but so it ends, 26-23, and, and the place was just, it was, um, I don't know, it was one of the first games where I was coached. Um, it was like admir it was like mutual respect, admiration. Sure. I mean, I was coached, or just giving that hug type deal, like, great job. And, and it wasn't like, yeah, we, I mean, those kids were telling us, unbelievable. Those kids are like, man, you guys, you're the toughest team we play. You know, that's unreal. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere, the, uh, the, um, what you brought to the table, the physicalness. And I think at first they thought they were going to roll us too. And then they mm -hmm. realized, yeah, you ain't rolling us right now. So I was really mutual admiration. It was a great, just, um, for the kids, it was unbelievable just to watch those kids play. And then after the game, just, Mutual respect and admiration. Right. Well, it kind of gets back to what you said from day one. You just want your kids to play as hard as they possibly can. Yeah. And the good thing is we'll take care of themselves. And, right. And you can see that, you know, this is just a perfect example of what can happen. Yeah, and this is, if there's going to, if, if you can get something out of a lot, you always got to get something out of something besides, whether it's a win or a loss, right. you want to pull something from it. And um, I told the kids on the, after the game, be proud of your effort. Don't be happy with the result. Mm -hmm. I go, it's easy for people are going to tell you now, great job. You guys yeah. almost beat it. <laughs> Unbelievable. You're, you could play at state school. And I'm like, well, that's where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and on the bus on the way home, I just told the kid again, I said, don't be happy. I don't want to hear a lot of cheering. I mean, we still lost. Right. right. But now be proud of your effort. Mm -hmm. And realize if you bring that kind of effort to the table, minus mistakes we make, mm -hmm. we got a chance to, to, to play pretty well the rest of the season. So that's why I want to make sure. Don't, you know how it is. You play a great team. Yeah. People want to tell you, oh, you guys play so great. But as a coach, you're really. No moral victories. <laughs> yeah, they're in the moral victory. You either yeah. win or you lose. But now I want to tell the kids, hey, you put yourself in a position where everybody around the state now knows. Because mm -hmm. right now people look at score and say, four, Lakeland, <laughs> Osh, wow. You know, they, they must be doing something down there. Well, I got to say something that might be off track here but I think it's a benefit for you being hired from out of state because I went through the same process being from Illinois yeah. and you come up here and everybody's like oh the state schools the state schools and being from Illinois it doesn't mean a thing because it didn't I don't care if we're playing stout or point it didn't right. matter to us because we'd beat them anyways and it just right. wasn't a big thing but I'm going to tell you from the baseball perspective yeah. the mentality of our kids having to overcome that was huge yeah. and I didn't realize that coming in I don't know if you see the same no thing. I think but I think that is I think you hear the kids talking about certain things about state right. schools yeah just kind of go and, and maybe I, I joked a lot, around a lot in practice about that, like, yep. ooh, we should. That's exactly you know, right. I've had people tell us, I've had people tell me, man, I don't know why you guys schedule those. Now, I had nothing to do with the scheduling. Right. I mean, my schedule, I think, set until this 2006. Mm -hmm. But I just, I mean, being from the CCIW, from Milliken and Augie, and we played Augie and Wheaton, Wesleyan. That's, that's what the state school league is. Mm -hmm. It's Augie, Wesleyan, Wheaton. Right. Milliken, Carthage, North Central. I mean, was were these guys any better than Carthage? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they were bigger. You know, and and but they play as hard. That's what those schools, those leaders, so good because they all play so hard. And there's no quote unquote weak sister, I should say, or whatever. Right. They just and and people start buying into that. Ooh, and like you said, I was a better coach early on in Milliken, I think, because I knew about all you, but I didn't care. Right. All you yeah. Wheaton. I'm from Carbondale. I just coached against. South Florida, Western Illinois, Eastern, who cares about mm -hmm. Augie? Yeah. Just like I said, these guys, I go stout. And the game, when the game was going on, I said, that's a good football team. Mm -hmm. Not a, not unbelievable where we couldn't. I, that's a good football team, well coached, good, disciplined, physical football team. That's how I hope our kids always play. Right. Those are the kind of games you want to play in, you know, those kind of games. So I agree with you. I think it does help me going stout. I told our kids, just joking. <laughs> I said, you put this. 
oh, this is a, is a school with the name of the state in front of it. Yep. Well, call us Wisconsin Lakeland. <laughs> there you go. Now we're, just, now we're you know, it's not, it has nothing to do with it. Yep. It's just, it's Oshkosh to me. Yep. It's Stevens Point, it's Stout, it's, it's La Crosse, it's Platteville, it's, it's Lakeland, it's St. Norbert. It's kids, who, it comes down to how bad kids want to play and how right. hard they want to work. Let's go ahead and look at the tape yeah. here, too. We got some great highlights from the game. A couple of offensive, a couple of defensive. I just took a peek at it. So if they're bad, Coach Warsaw, our GA, is fired again. Second week in a row. This is a, one of the few running plays we got off. This is Marcus Denham running. This is an ISO. This is a, we, we had some burst. We gained 14 or 15 there. He did a nice job here. This is Sean Barron making a great play. Catches the hitch, breaks one tackle, breaks two, fakes out number three, and gets to the end of one of his 15 catches. And he's 6'3 doing that stuff. Here's a, the play that ties us, puts us into overtime. A little play action. Brent does a great job from the back side, backside post to you know who. Sean Barron. Great job. Um, this is Sean's catch in overtime. We actually run a play that gets kind of broken up. Sean adjusts. You won't be able to see it, but he's 6'4 and those two kids are 5'10. So you throw it out there, let them go. Defensively, just threw a couple at you, and they played really well. David Ben here on the sack. They couldn't block our kids on pass. Once we got them in the passing situations, they couldn't block us. They, they, had, they had something excited running the ball because they're, they're big. Here we are causing a fumble. This is a big play because we just got stroke not scoring, and we get the ball right back. A great play again, that fumble. This is a roll about more. We need this play to get the ball back in the fourth quarter, and he just strokes that quarterback. And here's the last play of the game. Just so. We, we, we hit a flat, the flat route's covered, our slant's open right there, right in the middle of the field, we just threw a little behind him. And that's no disrespect to Brent or who threw that, and I didn't want people to think, oh, he's, he's making, sure. no, I want to show him, and Brent feels worse than anybody, and I feel worse than Brent, because when I call a play, or when, I, when, when our team does something, mm -hmm. I, I learned from whoever told me this, maybe Bob Stoops or Jim Tress or somebody I listened to before, and they said, you coach what you see on tape. What you see on tape is what you coach. So I feel terrible because I'm the one who's coaching the, the quarterbacks and whatever. I mean, we have to make those plays as offensive quarterback. Well, if a kid makes a poor throw, I should have worked harder to get his feet properly set. I should have made him realize that that slant's going to be open if the flat route is. So I mean, I I take full. You know, I'm like, oh, because I knew it on tape. I'm going on. Oh, and we had chances. So that's, that's one of the numerous plays where we had chances. Well, you guys, you know, you, even though Brent missed that pass there at the end, right. you know, like you said, he's had one heck of a game. 30 of 53 overall. Right. He, uh, got to throw the ball quite a bit more than normal, but he had over 300 <laughs> yards passing, too. Well, I tell you, I think what happened, everybody thought we were coming here with this run nine million times type <laughs> deal. I think we're going to throw more than you. <laughs> What's happened, though, is we've created a bunch of different formations for people to adapt to. And our kids are still playing physical at this moment. We're playing with a 156-pound halfback and a 204-pound center against a defense that probably averaged 270 up front, mm -hmm. and they were mean, tough. Their front six is good. It's really good. So we had, we had to keep pounding it in there, though. But we'll get there. I want those kids to realize we're not, that's what we're going to be like. But yeah, so we threw it 53 times or whatever. Still yeah, ran it 43. I was going to say you ran it 43 times. And I think in last year's situation, not comparing you know, your team right. to another, but that probably, we would have been throwing the ball 75 right. times last year. Exactly. And that's why I think we, they still have to buy help. What's helping our pass game is a run game. Mm -hmm. Right now, they still know we, they have to prepare for it because they don't, we're going to gash it. Mm -hmm. We just need to get a big run. You know, we haven't got, I think that I ran the reverse again. It was the third, second week in a row around Jeff still, still gained some. But our biggest run last week was um, maybe Brent at 15 or like Marcus might have one at 14 yards. So it's not, we didn't have that 40 yard gash that right. you need to kind of break the ice. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing we were just talking about again at break yeah. is just how proud you have to be of the defense. I mean, the bottom line is they just haven't been giving up many points. No, they, they, they have. Week in and week out. And we got a couple turnovers. Um, I, I forgot how many they had, one or two turnovers. They might have one turn, we might have two. It was pretty even. When you look at the stats, that game was even, Steven. It was, yep. a, it was 40 to 35 in terms of time of possession. So even though we threw the ball more, the possession time was still even for the most part. The yardage was about 40 or 50 yards off. We had more first downs, I think. I mean, right. We had, the unique thing was we had like 20 more plays than they had. Exactly. That's we had like 96, they had like 77. 77, right. So the statistical battle, I mean, and that's just, when you go into quadruple overtime, it's, a, it's an even game. <laughs> but their coaches were really, uh, 
um, how do you say it? I don't know, because we're not in awe. They're really complimentary. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Jim, great job. Those kids play. Now, you're, you've done a great job with those kids making them play. I go, I don't do anything. I, I point them in the right direction, mm -hmm. and our kids go at it. And at least our kids have realized that they can get respect from these coaches going, I don't think they're walking around today going, hey, we, pu we put a beating on somebody. They're coming around going, they can play with anybody in our league. Mm -hmm. You know, just like I think we can play with anybody in the country. I'm not going to be worried if someone right. calls up and a Millican wants to call or he's a coach or you get the good old Purple Raiders on the phone and they want to play. <laughs> we're going to give effort. How does that mean we're going to know? We're going to give effort. We still got to, we still have to make some corrections. Sure. And at this moment in the season, you know, as a baseball coach, you get to the, the third of the season. Mm -hmm. Well, now you got, if someone's not getting the job done, someone else has to go. Yep. And, and at our moment, if there's a freshman who's doing okay and there's an upclassman who's still struggling, well, then the freshman's going to play mm -hmm. because well, we have four, you have four years with them. And I think you're going to see some new faces in some situations um, come this week. But it's, it's for that's not because it's a fire sale. I'm expecting great success from this moment forward. Mm -hmm. I told them this is a springboard to step four. Mm -hmm. or the second half of our season, which I call preseason non-conference, you know, regular season is the conference schedule. And that's where we start this Saturday. Mm -hmm. Well, again, both teams were well coached. Only eight penalties the entire game, three for them and five for you guys. That was, yeah, they called nothing. <laughs> they didn't care. Well, Except that, they that's called more. It was unbelievable. They just let it go. They let it go. That was a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. A lot of the different, even. And they, we just got caught in that first overtime drive getting yeah. molested with penalties. Mm -hmm. But after that, it was they didn't call anything. We only got a couple minutes yeah. left here. I want to have a, uh, mention a couple guys yeah. defensively. That stood out. Mike yeah. Gregory had a big game for you again. And Gregory, we get Rosie Gregory, yeah. uh, the D line, um, played well in the second half. Um, Eric Boyd made the big play. I mean, you can go on and on. The receiver, the DBs did a great job. They didn't give anything in the pass game besides one little razzle dazzle. But the linebackers played well. Yeah. Vision, Rosie, and Mike Gregory, outstanding. Mm -hmm. Well, now you got the big game coming up, the start of the Illini Badger Football right. Conference on Saturday. You guys are hosting Back to home Rica. again. Yep. So it's nice, though. Done with those night games. <laughs> night games. Yeah, no more the rest Jeez, of the year. Uh, until the playoffs, until the postseason. Play exactly. Right. So we got a couple minutes left. What do you yeah. think about the Eureka game? Um, good. I told him step three, each game's a stepping stone. And regardless of if you have to fall back or not, do we take much of a step back? No. I think we're right there on step three, getting ready to go to step four, which is Eureka. I told the kids, you got to take this feeling you have. I mean, there were kids crying, and I was, how do you say this, happy to see it because they actually, it, it shows. Right. I go, you guys actually care finally. You care about each other, and we're a family. Mm -hmm. The reason it hurts so bad is because you actually care about each other, mm -hmm. and that's where it is. I go, but you're not allowed to feel this way until, only until 3 o'clock on Sunday. Once we're at practice on Sunday and we're done, it's on Eureka. So at this moment, I don't care. Like, I didn't care what Stout ran. I, don't, I mean, Stout, what Oshkosh ran. I don't care what Eureka run. They're step four. But they're also the first part of our conference season. So they're coming up here. I think it's good for us to get back home. Two night games, which screws up your schedule because you get back at 1 o'clock right. in the morning. And that's why I still look like crap because I'm still looking tired. <laughs> but I think it's a great game for the fans to come back out to our show that support at home, which we got on the road. And go, Eureka, I think, struggled a little bit this season so far. Mm -hmm. They're either 1-2 and two or 0-3 oh or something like that. But it's conference. And I, I told her, you don't have to play harder. You, we got to play better in terms of less mistakes, but keep giving great effort. And let's get the conference season off to the start. Because playing well against Oshkosh and beating cards in the trash gate doesn't mean squat if you go in there and, and don't get up. Because our kids will be up. Mm -hmm. It's home. It's conference. Let's go. Yep. Well, we're getting the time. we yeah. got to wrap it up. Right. So. Thanks again for joining us today. Great recap Anytime. of the game. So, again, the Muskies <laughs> fell in a great game, 26 to 23, four overtimes at UW Oshkosh. Uh, the men's and women's, or excuse me, the men's and women's soccer teams played this weekend. Unfortunately, they both went 0 and 2 to Carthage and St. Norbert's in some some tight games. And the volleyball team went 2 and 2 this week at the Elmhurst uh, Invitational, and they're getting better all the time. A nice young team that Coach Schreiber's doing a great job with building them up for the long run here. So, if you get a chance, come on out this Saturday, 1:30 versus Eureka at Lakeland College. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Lakeland Locker Room.